Are you ready, Wes? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us now to uh, understand some of these things that we have here. And then, Lord, as we uh, see this, uh, uh, this tape today, we ask, Father, that you would help us to even become more aware of the things that are going on around us that need to be corrected and that uh, we need to uh, protect ourselves from and those to whom we minister. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I have this sheet of paper. If you'll just take that, and uh, the fellows uh, have to know that tomorrow we'll probably finish this up plus another tape, and uh, then we will. Uh, I will leave a test and a key uh, to the test so that um, so that Mrs. the Registrar of Northland Bible College will uh, grade it according to your scale and uh, give grades to those who uh, want credit in the course. Um, now, old Dr. Uh, Vaclav Voita one time was teaching us history. Now, he was a, a, a Russian that ca he came from Russia. And uh, he was so glad to be an American that he always had me get up and lead the song Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, you know, the old battle hymn of the Republic. And, uh, but he put a K on the end of every word. And he says, uh, you are always asking me for quiz. You want quiz. You want quiz on this and quiz on that. How can I give you quiz when I haven't taught you anything yet? And so I feel a little bit that way when most of the material that we've covered uh, is uh, in some ways redundant. The only thing is there needs to be some order to our thinking with regard to not only uh, uh, sectarianism. I noticed on that printout that we had here the word, uh, uh, there's the T is left out of it. And what I mean by sectarian is divisions within the Christian faith, within the, uh, the Bible-related Christian faith. I, uh, what I mean by sectarianism is, uh, is uh, Catholics, Presbyterians, Methodists, Congregationalists, Pentecostals, Nazarenes, Holiness, Mennonite brethren. Did I forget any? Did I forget any, Lila? Uh, Baptists, and then there's the non-denominational denomination. Have you ever heard of them? Yeah. The, then there's the non-sectarian sect, you know. And uh, they, they, all of them, all of them should be valued as Christian people. But awareness more than antagonism uh, for those who know Christ, there should be no antagonism. Uh, I have Pentecostal friends. Like, there's a black Pentecostal that sends his children to our school. He said, why don't you ever have any blacks preach in your chapel? And I said, Stan, I'd just love to have you preach, but I think you'd get up there and preach on tongues. I would not. I mean, this is the kind of argument we have. And no one would ever believe that we were in uh, that we were enemies. And he doesn't. He thinks, I respect his views. He's wrong, 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 you know, <laughs> like most other people are, including my wife. But anyway, uh, I, I, just, uh, I, I just believe that we, have to, uh, uh, that we have to know what we're talking to. Uh, we like to become such part of the, our friends that sometimes we ignore too much about where they come from and the reasons why they believe what they believe. And that's why I gave you that first sheet. If any of you didn't get it, there's a copy of it laying over there. Uh, Mrs. Peterson, would you get that and bring those to me? But uh, yesterday we uh, put uh, here symptoms of neo-evangelicalism and I think that uh, these are some symptoms that we need to go through. Uh, how about, did you get 
uh, sheet of this. Um, uh, any of you that didn't, why, we'll be glad to let you have one. It, uh, it's just putting a little bit of order to the reasons why people believe different things or what is the basis for what uh, the different things that they believe. Pardon? Yes, this copy, but there's another one there. Oh, yeah. Well, there's some more there somewhere. I'll get them out. But, but the wonderful thing that uh, we can do is to know something about uh, people that we are faced with and then be so aware of it. For instance, symptoms of neo-evangelicalism. Uh, Brother Steve, do you want one of these before we go much further? We, we dealt with this a little bit yesterday uh, because people are so aware that when there are differences there could be antagonism or there could be uh, the discussion could be inflammatory. So then they emphasize love. Oh, you've got to love them, no matter what they believe. I'll tell you what. Most things that are in error lead to other error. Error multiplies itself. Error will multiply itself a lot quicker than, uh, than truth uh, in, in the mind of a carnal person. Uh, so first of all, you have that error. Uh, uh, of love above doctrine. Oh, we've got to love each other. Well, uh, again, uh, keep in mind how you're going to fit that into uh, your love for the Word of God. And uh, <clears throat> then rethinking. This, this suggests progressiveness. This suggests uh, um, that some of the old established truths need to be reinvestigated. Now, there's nothing wrong with being thoroughgoing in your study of the Word. But I'll tell you, this is one of the characteristics, one of the things that they do. They reinvestigate. And then, resting the Scripture. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean uh, changing the meaning of the Scripture. It's, it could mean an overemphasis and a pressure on a certain Scripture that ignores other principles in the Word of God. You ha you'd, have to, uh, you'd have to observe that because there are people that go around with the big old button. Like the w uh, By the way, my wife was talking about uh, Brother Cobb making uh, buttons and it said BCV, book, chapter, and verse. And so everything you had had to have book, chapter, and verse. And believe me, he was, uh, when the first time I uh, g finally sat down with him to talk to him about where the church began, he says, I've got book, chapter, and verse, about six of them. And so each one of them were, uh, f were, uh, were errors in his understanding of the principle that as other elsewhere laid down in the Scripture. And so he started taking his, I haven't seen one of those around. They used to have them in the drawers around there, but I haven't seen one around for years. He didn't wear his anymore. Uh, but, and, and then I heard him telling somebody else just exactly what I had told him about, uh, we, we want to establish the things we believe on basic biblical principles that are well founded with great deal of of text, resting the scriptures, and then attempts to Christianize pagans. I used an extreme one yesterday where the uh, missionary went onto the field and took off his clothes because the people weren't wearing clothes. It's kind of the thing that people are doing today with regard to uh, uh, lifestyle evangelism. Have you heard that word up here, lifestyle evangelism? Uh, it's, uh, boy, fit into their style. Uh, uh, they will start by saying, you've got to go where the lost people are. You've got to sit with the lost people. You've got to do this. Well, uh, I suppose that there are many occasions when a person can exercise himself to be sure that he's where lost people are. And then it's more lifestyle than it is uh, 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 speech, you know, and the exercise and use of the Word of God, opening your mouth. The Apostle Paul 
when he went to Philippi, he didn't walk back and forth down there at the waterfront while the women, while those Jewish women were going through their water ceremonies or whatever they were doing there at the water. He didn't walk by and just smile at them and be nice to them. He opened his mouth and he asserted that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. And, of course, once this started, why, you remember what happened at Philippi, and a great church started. Lifestyle evangelism is, is, uh, uh, is kind of a plague right now. Be sure that you're aware of it when you see it. And uh, then uh, another pr thing, uh, someone will say, I don't want to hear this negativism. All I want is the positive message. Uh, you can put some percentages on how much you pre pre preach positive and negative depending on your crowd. Uh, at my church, I don't have to preach much negative. Um, uh, what, 20%? Uh, 10%? Uh, most of the time, it's, it's just making, and I have an idea that the pastor here, the, the preacher here, the one who's doing the preaching, he doesn't have to stand up here and, and uh, uh, get big blood vessels in his necks and have his eyes bulge out preaching about uh, against uh, certain things, uh, uh, sins and so forth. But we do in this last day when Satan is gathering his forces. I mean, he's, he really knows his time is short, I believe. And so he's gathering his forces. And things that were innocent ten years ago are very critical today. Uh, for instance, when I started in the ministry, it, it was nothing for me to fellowship with, uh, with people who believed like I did, uh, or that didn't believe like I did. Uh, I would fellowship a great deal with, uh, uh, with a lot of different people because the social morals were at one level. For instance, back in those days, uh, your, uh, say your spiritual morals we're up here running along this line social morals that weren't even Bible connected necessarily were about like this but now what has happened is I mean uh, uh, for instance uh, uh, maybe uh, the, the Christians wouldn't cuss in public uh, there was uh, blue laws in a lot of towns. I understand they have something going on here in Sioux now about uh, having businesses opened and, and uh, uh, so forth uh, on Sunday. Uh, there was a respect for decency also. And there were people that weren't saved that wouldn't allow some of the things to go on now. My uh, decency was... Uh, well, it ran along here while the spiritual um, decency remains the same. It remains biblical. But here's what's happened. Uh, the uh, social morals have dropped to here. It's socially all right for teenagers to live with each other, married and unmarried. Socially all right. Well, so here's what happens. Lifestyle Christianers they come down off this spiritual thing and they get down here too, see? And uh, so, uh, uh, so what has happened is that social morals have taken the neo-evangelical and these that we will mention here later has taken them down to a, to a lower level. And uh, has God's words changed? Is, uh, are the things that were sin when back in the 30s when I was growing up are they sin today? I hope nobody says maybe not. Because I believe the same things that were proper, the same manner of dress, the same uh, attitudes toward booze and, and uh, uh, carnal, carnality, and the same attitude toward Hollywood and its products, the same attitude should continue now. Uh, one of the problems that so many of us have is controlling, and especially you with little children, controlling your television. Uh, probably you ought to, if you're going to have a TV, you ought to invest in a, in a um, remote 
so that when old filthy mouth comes on or beer ads, you can tune them out. And, uh, if you're going to have it, if you're going to watch it with your family, I, uh, the best thing you can do is to sit down and talk about it with your family sometime. And that's why uh, uh, Tim wouldn't watch TV. Randy wouldn't. I, Randy was in my house one day, and uh, uh, we he had his kids there on the floor, and we were visiting, and and uh, all of a sudden some bad language, and Randy just went over and shut off the TV. I thought, good night. You ought to shut off the TV in your own home, but not mine. And then I thought, he's right. That's the only way you can raise children today. And uh, so keep in mind uh, where the spiritual morals have to remain the same. Uh, preaching a positive message. Fellowship and ministry with compromisers and apostates. And this is where uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, as far down as you want to go, separation is concerned. Uh, uh, Dr. Clock and I have friends that hardly seem to believe anything. I mean, or have people that were our friends, that went to school with us. But it doesn't seem like they believe anything. They don't believe anything about... They scarcely turn thanks at the, Lord, at the table. And uh, they have no concept of faithfulness or obedience to the Lord. And, uh, and they still are involved in some kind of a ministry. Many of them have, have changed their mind on the verity of the Word of God and many of the, uh, many of the verities. And then, seven, is turning the church into a social institution. Now, there are some categories, and these I wrote on the board the other day. I want you to remember them. Categories of those whom we must identify. The historic fundamentalist. I trust that all of us want to be a historic fundamentalist. Uh, now, uh, what people usually like to say about this kind of an attitude is that it's, that it's so negative that I don't want to be identified. I want to be identified with a historic fundamentalist. Someone, that, and so what they do, they identify us with foot stomping, pulpit pounding, Bible believing, separated Baptists. Oh, they've got a whole bunch of things that they can add to it. Well, um, uh, if the right kind of people are saying that about me, that's all right. I mean, if the wrong kind of people are saying that about me, it's all right. But, uh, uh, but uh, what, what that should mean to you is a close walk with the Lord and, a disre and, and an absolute understanding that there are those who want to chip away at the stand we take on the Word of God. Now, the Zudo fundamentalist, uh, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, they're good fundamental people. I'm going to tell you, a Presbyterian can't be a fundamentalist as far as I'm concerned. But they call them Presbyterians. Lila, you don't have to listen. Uh, of course, Lila's not a Presbyterian. Uh, but Lila's going to be nice to me today. Uh, I don't believe they can because they come out of the Reformation. And uh, I wasn't given this job to, uh, to tell what somebody else believed. I, I, have, I scarcely believe that there was enough that came out of the Reformation that was good for anything. And I'll tell you why. I live in a community that's surrounded by German Lutherans. And I'll, they think they're saved. And they're lost as lizards. They can. They, they uh, honestly, bless their heart, they go to church. That bell rings every Sunday. But they were saved by baptism. Can a person be saved by baptism? Now, if they are saved, it's in spite of what they believe, not because of what they believe. And uh, so um, uh, there are people that say, oh, he's a good fundamentalist, you know. And uh, uh, can a person uh, hold to church state? and be a fundamentalist? I don't believe so. And so there are people that uh, uh, you go to the Scotch Highlands over in Scotland and they are the Scotch Presbyterian people and they belong to the Scottish Rite of the Masonic Order and they say, oh, they're good fundamentalists. They're Zudo fundamentalists. The word Zudo means in name only. Now there are some of them that have many orthodox doctrines, and so you'd have to con you might confuse them with people that are very orthodox. Now, being orthodox, my definition of orthodox is that a person sets down with the Bible and is 
is more than just generally correct on what they believe concerning the Word of God. They, uh, uh, they're more than just generally. And uh, these are careful about the doctrine, varying, uh, concerning, uh, varying, having varying concern about practice. They, some of them uh, are concerned about uh, you take the orthodox person he uh, he may uh, uh, he may be blind as a bat when it comes to um, to things that are going on in his uh, in his ministry he may be ministering the word of god teaching a sunday school class and uh, not not see that there are things that are going on even among the people to whom he ministers that needs to be corrected but this is what I would say there ought to be some aspiration. And then the neo-orthodox uh, and the conservative and the evangelical and the neo-evangelical. Now, uh, the evangelical there seems to express the, um, uh, the thought about these. They are, they are generally evangelistic. They want to see people saved uh, to whatever extent or committed to Christ or committed to something. And it could be that... that that isn't uh, all that it uh, uh, all that it would seem uh, would mean to us. The neo-orthodox, uh, he's a person that's done a lot of rethinking, and uh, then the conservative is one who uh, who hangs on to many of the doctrines and uh, probably would love to fellowship with uh, the historic fundamentalist if he would. And then the evangelical. There are a lot of organizations that are uh, that are preaching the gospel, but they have forgotten the practice of personal and theological uh, theological separation altogether. And the neo orthodox, and of course, here's a name that you need to connect with that. The father of neo orthodoxy is a man by the name of Harold Ockengay. He's the one that or neo evangelicalism. Uh, he is the one that started it. Harold Ockengay. He came from Boston, came down to uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and held a meeting there. And he said, "What we need to do is provide for uh, our nation." In order to get them some semblance of Christian faith, we need to provide for them a latitude of those who believe a neo-evangelicalism, a message that they will accept, both the most extreme liberal and the most extreme fundamental. So um, he's the one that started that word. Now, these are generally evangelistic. They're careless about doctrine. They're obviously careless about theological and personal separation, and they're generally into lifestyle uh, Christianity. Now, the liberal is an anti-biblical person, and uh, the modernist, anti-biblical regarding to doctrine. They, they actually say, well, the story of Jonah, or the miracles, or the passing through the flood. You should hear some of the things that they say. Um, uh, Moses and that crowd, they passed through the Reed Sea. Not the Red Sea, but the Reed Sea. All it was was a bunch of reeds there, and it was very marshy. And when the wagons came through there and the wheels went hard, it was because of the, uh, because of the mud. You know, uh, well, now, there was no mud there. There was either a flood or there was, uh, it was dry land because Israel went through on dry land. I believe that it was total America. Well, y y these people, they, they kind of laugh at the, uh, at the miracles of the Bible. And, and, of course, most of them have very little respect for the Word of God. Liberals and modernists, they're totally social in their purpose. Um, just like we saw the other night, an extreme modernist uh, was uh, this, this priest of the church there. And then, uh, then, of course, there's the cultic, and that's named doctrines like the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, and uh, then there's the occult, and this is com cosmic and demonic. Uh, they're into drug-inspired uh, 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 mind-changing and, uh, and then transcendental meditation and yoga. This is occultic, and then uh, Satan worshipers, they worship the person of Satan himself. Turn over the 
what happened. Don't tell me I got the same thing on both sides of all of them. There's another side to that thing laying up there that was really important. We're going to turn this on. I'm going to go back and get it. And uh, uh, we'll get that for you because what I did, I turned these pages over so that I could put the other, the uh, what I think is the most important part of this thing on the other side. Maybe we'll have to do that tomorrow, okay? We're just briefly on this now. I just want you to go over it. Uh, this man said... The best action you can take is to know the Word. You don't have to go out worrying that somehow you're going to be duped if you know the Word of God because God has a wonderful spirit of protection for those who trust the Word. That's number one. Uh, what can we do? Is it too late? Is any act to respond? Now, this is what we have to do with our children, too. We have to teach them uh, the Word of God. Uh, do not harbor sin and impurity some demons like filth the hogs for instance i just j i that's the way my mind runs they said don't send us somewhere let, let us go into the hogs uh, there in gadara they uh, and uh, uh, by the way if a person is living an impure life he lays his life wide open for some other method of uh, what we might call atonement or justification rather uh, justification so uh, uh, look for those things that are in your life that need to be destroyed I I've had people tell me that uh, that boy they've had things uh, artifacts when I say artifacts they've had magazines they've had little junk um, uh, I'll tell you I have a paper and I should have brought it on the 52 deck of cards the hearts diamonds clubs and spades I should have brought that but that, that was made for a maniac king. And uh, that has probably brought to poverty and sin more people than almost anybody else. The, the deck of cards that is used for gambling, and you say, well, I can use it for solitaire, no problem. Uh, just ask God what you should do with it. Uh, probably the best thing would be to start a fire with them. You know. I remember when my mother walked in and she saw my brother-in-law standing sitting there playing with the deck she walked over grabbed him went over opened the old burner and threw him in he said they cost 25 cents that was back in the 30s and he she said here's your 30 cents don't bring another one on this place uh, keep your house clean you know um, uh, it sounds almost ritualistic but they sure swept the leaven out when they were going to uh, when they were going to worship god and and uh, so don't, don't, sh don't slough off in this area. And then know your enemy. You, you've taken the time today to sit here and watch this stuff, this ridiculous thing, you know. You've, say, you've taken time. Know about it. Remember that, uh, that the thing has many ramifications. Now, if your husbands, for instance, wanted to go join the Masonic Lodge because of the fellowship and the and the political aspect of it, just keep in mind that, uh, uh, that uh, they would be presented with the brightest side of that character building thing that they are, they're thinking of. So be sure you know your, uh, your enemy. And then uh, show those involved the anti-Christian aspects of their belief. Many of them are anti-Semitic. Uh, look into that. Think about that answer uh, or that part of it. Um, many of them are anti-Semitic. And what does the Word of God say? I think that God made an everlasting covenant with Abraham. He said, I'll bless them. I'll bless thee. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. And of course, we know about that. And, uh, and then he goes on. He said, I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee. And that, that has never been withdrawn. Never been withdrawn. And every nation that has risen to power, uh, Egypt, Babylon, Rome, United States, any country that's ever allowed liberty to the Jews or has been a place where the Jews could come in and function, uh, uh, that, that nation has risen to greatness. Okay, and uh, know, their, know their personnel, uh, who to be aware of, by the way, 
Alice Bailey has a book out. Find out about Alice Bailey. Find out what you can know about her. Um, Benjamin Krim. Uh, find out all you can about him. David Spangler. Find out all you can about him. Also, such people as John Denver. John Denver, the musician. Boy, uh, you ought to find out. Get, get right to, uh, well, right to Constant Cumbie or uh, Anchorman or Marlon Maddox and get the information that you can about all of these people, including John Denver. And uh, uh, he's part uh, of the New Age movement uh, that's called PAN. Uh, uh, people, uh, something, uh, and and uh, boy, it's it's nothing in the world. But the New Age movement accelerated, and now uh, no good sources. Somebody said too that he is a bisexual. What uh, did somebody mention that? Did one of you mention John Denver? That okay. And then uh, um, no good sources. Don't listen to the losers. By the way, don't ever listen to somebody that you can look into their life and see that there's a whole lot of uh, that there's a whole lot of uh, of subterfuge and, and uh, wretchedness. Um, listen to your pastor. Listen to godly people. Uh, now you have to know how to judge a godly person. Uh, David Hunt uh, seems to be uh, very good. Find out more about him. I need to find out more about him. Marlon Maddox. Now, these people, you won't agree with them uh, totally, and certainly Constance Cumbie, you won't agree with the fact that she uh, uh, goes to a church that teaches holiness, like the Nazarene church teaches it. You won't agree with that, so be sure that you check that out. And John Ankerberg, uh, this fellow here, I, I would classify him, while he's d done a very good job uh, in presenting this, I would classify him something less than a fundamentalist. Um, even uh, and and uh, for some reasons that I probably uh, y that you may not share with me, um, uh, for instance, I think the long hair uh, is an evidence that he uh, uh, that he doesn't necessarily wish to obey the Bible, and like old uh, the fellow that on the tape the other day, well you don't you haven't heard that tape yet that one's r that one's rare. He said, don't ask me how long is ha long hair. Uh, what is short? Is long the opposite of short? Then uh, if it's not going to be long hair, then what should it be? Intermediate. Well, go ahead. You know, I've, ha I've had, a, I'm up to here with that argument. I'm going to start shaving my, well, but then it says over, you know, I don't have to worry about it. And I, and you may think, you may think, well, he's got a, uh, he's trying to bolster up his own baldness, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but just keep that in mind. And then uh, uh, you say, well, I've met some good Christians that have, ball, uh, uh, have long hair. Uh, would they have been any better? Would they have looked any more neat? Or would, they, would there have been less question about them if they would have taken steps to cut it? All right. And uh, be sure to know about about these people also, even though they are good sources. Marlon Maddox is in Dallas, Texas. You might uh, uh, write to Constant Cumby. Their their address is going to be here, and uh, tell them that you want to find out about the background of each one of these people, including her. Find out uh, uh, where she stands on the holiness that is taught by the Nazarene Church, in which she goes, and tell her that you're not trying to be inflammatory. You ju you're just you're just anxious to uh, to be right and tell her to get her heart right too all right <clears throat> uh, be an aggressive soul winner hey this will answer a lot of things be an aggressive soul winner uh, the most aggressive soul winners in the world that I've ever met uh, they somehow uh, like like Paul Levine Paul Levine is probably a track man and he is so aggressive but if you sat down with him he has heard just enough about all of these situations so that he's not going to get involved with them um, I've met some others uh, George Mensick an aggressive soul winner uh, and he doesn't get involved with the New Age movement or some of the other th cults that are going around 
And then uh, <clears throat> constant fellowship with Christ through the study of his word and prayer. And then refer to number two above constantly. Um, uh, do not harbor sin and impurity in your life. I'll tell you, uh, I, that's, what, that's the thing that concerns me. When I realize that there are things that, that God speaks to me on a regular basis when I allow him to, uh, that those things could lay me wide open to accept something that would probably turn me down a wrong road and I'd go through all kinds of sloughs of despond and everything else. Let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, thank you for these dear people. And I ask, Lord, that what we've said and done this week will have been profitable. And we trust, Lord, that you would uh, help us to love thee more and win people to Christ and, and love thy people. And, Lord, help us. If there is someone involved in these things, help us, Lord, to, uh, to not alienate them to the extent that we can't help them. And yet, Father, if there are those that are that are bound over to these things, to these cults and these, uh, uh, and these uh, other things. We ask, Lord, that you would uh, give us wisdom as to how we should respond, even to the extent of avoiding them. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just bless and strengthen us and bless this ministry here above everything in this community. Just honor your name as these people are fit together to minister and to serve thee. We pray this in Jesus' name.